All right, so this video is going to be starting our coverage of chapter seven of Barron's AP Physics C, dealing with uh, the first section of rotation and the kinematics, force, work, and energy that uh, affect uh, rotational kinematics. Um, we're going to be looking specifically at the concepts of angular position, velocity, and acceleration, and how they relate to their linear counterparts, uh, rotational inertia, and kinetic energy, relating torque what is torque, defining it, and relating it to Newton's second law rotationally. And we're also going to be looking at uh, rotational work and power in these next few videos. Now, why do we need these angular position, velocity, and acceleration numbers when we have our linear counterparts already? Well, let's look at an object that's rotating around, we'll say, counterclockwise, just for the sake of convenience. If you look at the individual particles, say one on the rim versus one halfway up, you're going to notice that they're going different speeds because uh, you know that one has to cover a greater distance to rotate the same amount that this one does. So you can't really treat the whole object as it's going the same linear speed. However, what these two uh, objects do share is a common angle they rotate through in a certain time. So after some time delta t, these two particles will be at the same angle. They'll have covered the same radial distance, but not the same linear distance. You'll notice this arc is much longer than the internal one. So this displacement is a useful value for um, rotating objects, and that's what's known as the angular position. Basically, how much angle it rotates through, uh, or how, how much angle it's displaced from some axis. And we usually refer to that as theta, which I'm sure you can recognize from pre-calc and whatnot. And this theta is measured usually in radians, which are the SI unit for angle. And there's two pi radians if you go all the way around. There's two pi radians for every revolution you go around the circle. And it's important to note that this angular position measures the total distance traveled. So for example, if you have this point out here and it makes a full circle and comes back, it's not at the uh, position zero radians, it's at the position two pi radians because it's gone all the way around this way. Oppositely, if you were to take it and turn it back, then it would be at zero again because the net total displacement would be zero. Now the total displacement, the total uh, angular position, delta theta, is basically just theta zero, or theta final rather, minus your initial angle. So if you go around uh, two pi radians, all the way around this way, but then you go back the other way, another two pi radians, you go negative two pi radians in your angle, you end up with that uh, net angular position is zero radians. And radians is a dimensionless uh, indicator. It's essentially just a constant that you multiply an angle by to get a convenient method through which you can measure the arc length around a circle. Now as our last note on the angular coordinate system, we should uh, say that theta equals position over radial distance. So the total linear distance you've covered over the radius, which makes sense because if you've gone, you know, one circumference around the circle and divide that by the radius of the circle, let's say you've gone, you know, one full circumference and divide that by the radius, you get uh, two pi just based on what the definition of pi is. Moving on now, we're going to look at uh, angular velocity and acceleration. So angular velocity is simply how fast it's rotating, and we usually represent that by omega. And then angular acceleration, which we represent with the Greek symbol alpha, which looks similar to an A, is basically the angular acceleration. So it could be pulling it forward at this point, or it could be slowing the rotation down at this point. And the formulas for these are very easy to derive based on our definition of angular position. So if you start with your theta equals x over r. You can conclude, rightly so, from the relationship between linear position velocity and acceleration that uh, angular position velocity and acceleration will have a similar derive and integral relationship. So if you derive theta with respect to time and derive this with respect to time, you're really doing dx dt because r is a constant. Therefore, you end up with d theta dt which is 
omega for the uh, purposes of convenience here equals dx dt over r. But dx dt is just the linear velocity. So we get that omega equals the velocity divided by the radius. You can divide through once again to get uh, d squared theta dt equals d omega dt or we conveniently write that as just alpha which is the derivative of velocity with respect to time over the radius or a over r. So you can see that all of these angular position velocities and accelerations relate to their linear counterparts simply by dividing the uh, linear measurement by the radius of the circle. It should be noted, however, that uh, despite the fact that um, uh, theta is dimensionless, it's in radians, because radians are dimensionless and you're dividing through by seconds each time to get these respective velocities and accelerations that omega has the units seconds to the negative one and alpha has the units seconds to the negative two. So just as a brief recap, um, the angular position, velocity, and acceleration all directly correspond to their linear components and uh, they can be related exactly the same with this chart showing the derivation to uh, go from one quantity to the other as well as their respective integration. And because this relationship holds true, you're essentially taking the exact same quantities, just dividing through by the radius of the circle about which you rotate. Um, all of our equations from linear kinematics hold true. So for example, the omega average equals the change in angular position over the change in time, just as the average velocity equal the change in x over the change in time. So if we have uniformly accelerated angular motion, for example, if there's a constant acceleration like this, or uh, rotationally you can think of it as a constant radial acceleration like that, uh, then all our equations from linear uniform acceleration hold true in their rotational analog. So for example, theta equals theta zero plus omega zero t plus alpha over two t squared would correspond to x equals x zero plus v zero t, etc. And so all of these right here are just uh, derived by taking the linear equivalent and dividing through by r. And if you'll recall from our chapter on uniform linear motion, we know that the centripetal acceleration of something moving in uh, uniform circular motion is v squared over r. But if we're working in the rotational coordinate system, in other words, we don't have this linear v value, we can derive another equation for the centripetal acceleration based on our known relationship between omega and v. So you multiply this r up here to get v equals omega r, and then just plug that in to the v squared right here, and you get that the acceleration uh, from the centripetal force is omega squared r. That concludes our uh, discussion of angular position, velocity, and acceleration. In the next video, we're going to be looking at rotational inertia, kinetic energy, torque, and Newton's second law.